feathers, happy little feathers, working with you basic, making a thing. Hey there fellow Wackadoos, hello again and welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Q-Basic Asylum. Where, as always, I am your guide and chief nut job in these parts. The one, the only, the one too many, Dr. Doodle. <sighs> Crowd goes wild. Uh, well, if you haven't already already guessed from the title up top there somewhere, uh, this episode we'll be talking about feelers. Yeah, and uh, well, so what are these wonderful feelers, these fantastical things you ask? Go ahead, ask. I'm waiting. Uh, well, anyway, yeah, so... I guess it's probably best to show you than to tell you. So, let's dive right in. Here we go. Alrighty, well, here we have QBA 13 up because this is episode number Lucky 13. A bunch of fingers, Lucky 13. Uh, and again, we are talking about feelers. Happy little feelers. So anyway, what are these feelers? Well, like I said, uh, pretty much just better show you. So here we go. Let's start this pig up. And boop, let's go. Okay, one, bang. Now, all right, I'm sure you're thinking, well, if you've seen my first episode, you're thinking, oh, I've seen all this before, right? Well, yeah, but no, because check this out. Watch this. Uh, and, and, and see, that yeah, a little different there, kind of cool, but how about this one? Yeah, okay, now that's that's neat. you got no trails this time, but I'll show you that. Well, that's pretty simple, but all right, well, how about four? Okay, four is cool, too, but now number five. This is where the real magic happens. Bang, look at that. Oh, I'm going crazy there. Hey, but you know, if you remember it with uh, episode four, yeah, we talked about collisions where it would collide with everything and, and that would, like with the edges, would collide with the edge, whatever, what have you, or collide with the enemy. But in that episode, or, or with that technique, what we did, well, let me just stop this, it's annoying. Uh, let's, let me see here, uh, how about six? Is that the one I want to see? Yeah, there we go. Nope, seven, there it is. Yeah, so these guys here, uh, if you remember, in episode four, we talked about collisions, and the way they happened is that uh, Cubasic would, would uh, move the like the yellow thing or the blue thing around the screen there, and then it would check, well, have I collided with something? Have I collided with someone? Have I collided with something? But it has to know the location of this and that, and the coordinates of this and that. What's the difference? Is it close? Is it... You know, that's just... Oh. That gets me, I mean, you can imagine the amount of, of calculations it would have to do. So in this case, we're doing something completely different. Hold on just a second. Boop. And quit. All right, so we're starting here at the top, and we're initializing our list. <laughs> starting here at the top, we initialize the program, setting it to screen mode 13, which is 320 pixels by 200 high and 256 different colors, so we can do our graphics. We clear our, our arrays, and, well, if there are any arrays set from a previous run or variables from a previous run to clear them all out, sound is zero because that gets annoying. You'll, you'll find out later. Uh, we input enter option 1 through 8. And then we get our option to clear the screen. And here's our, our choices for the options. Now, depending on what we select, we either have a border or not. We either have lines or just little blips that you saw going around the screen. And we have a grid or not. The grids are those those lines in the middle there that it bounces off of. So we, we get our, our selection here. Then we come down. Uh, if the border is zero, 1, then we draw the border that it bounces around and if the grid is one then it shows the grid again those are the lines in the center uh no ignore those for a minute now these are we set up our our initial x and y locations x uh, h and yeah set up our initial x and y locations for the the dots different different lines whatever and then the directions for them now we go to the main program all right we go to do Go sub dot one and go sub dot three. Now, if lines equals zero, then go sub dot two, and if lines equals zero, then go sub dot four. What this means is, if it's if lines is one, that means we're drawing the lines like just like with the first program we ever did. We had those lines going around. If it's zero, then we don't want lines. We just want those little blips. So what we're doing is we call dot one to draw the first dot, and then dot two draws over it with black, which is what makes it look like there's it's just a little little dot. Same with three. Three is I guess the purple one. And then the sub four go yeah, dot four, excuse me, that subroutine there. It, it draws over the third dot. So all you see is instead of the lines, you just see the little dots. 
Yeah, I'm sure that's clear as mud. But anyway, go to restart, and then it just keeps going through with their system and the program. So now let's look at the the routines that actually do the work. We start by drawing the grid. We got for y1 equals 10 to 200 step 100. So that'll be twice it'll happen. And for x1 equals 10 to 400 step 90. So about five times. It draws the various lines on screen, which that's the grid that you saw there. Next i, and next, next x, and next y, then return. So that's pretty simple. All it does, it just draws the, the grid on screen. Now let's look at dot one. This is the yellow dot or the yellow line, depending on your option. And basically, it says if x is well, greater than 320, then x equals 1. And if it's greater, less than 1, then x equals 320. This is what allows it to roll if the border's not there. If it goes up, it keeps rolling by. Kind of like uh, the dude did in our first game there, the derp and the dude, where he would just warp across the screen. Well, that allows that to happen. If that's again if their border is not there depending on your selections now we take x and make it whatever it was before plus h1 x1 h1 and y1 is the same as y1 plus v1 so basically it's taking whatever the location it was for x1 and y1 adds the directions and now here's where the magic happens we got, if you see, we got feeler 1, feeler 2, feeler 3, and feeler 4. What this is, these are variables, essentially, and we're using the point function to check the color of the, the, the pixel immediately. What, this is above the x, x1, or y1, excuse me. This is the, the pixel immediately above y1, or the dot. Feeler 2 is, is the pixel immediately y1 plus 1, so immediately below the dot. And then for feeler three, it's the one immediately to the left, and then the one immediately to the right. In other words, you're checking the four pixels to the top, bottom, and left and right of the pixel that's being drawn. Why we're doing that is we're checking the color of these pixels. If any of them are not zero, then we have to do something because we've either hit the wall or the grid. So instead of collecting what are the coordinates here, we're just checking is basically this is the way ahead of me clear. Is it clear? Is it clear? Oh, with, there's a color. We must have hit something. Time to do something. So if feeler 1 equals 12, that's the color of the grid, then V1 equals 1. In other words, we're going to go down. Yeah. And if sound equals then sound equals blah, blah, blah. If feeler 2, two equals 12, which is that's the one below it, yeah, that's the, the feeler, that's the pixel below the, the, the dot. Then V1, or the vertical direction, is minus 1, so it goes up. Basically, here's the, the, the dot we're checking, and if the, the dot above it is 0, we're cool. But if it's not 0, we got to do something. And same with the one below it. So we come down, maybe it's the border here. We come down, boop, we hit the border. It's no longer 0 because you use the, the point function to check the color. It's no longer 0, so now we have to set V1 to negative 1, go back up. Now we're checking the 4 pixels again, and wait a minute, feeler 1 here, this is no longer 0 because it's hit the border. Now, because uh, this is not 0, we're, uh, the vertical direction is down. Basically, again, it's just checking top and bottom and bouncing back and forth as necessary. Well, 3 and 4 do the same thing horizontally. If it's coming this way, it's looking at feeler number three which is to the left of your, your point and boom, oh it's certainly di suddenly a different color so now we have to do something in this case if uh, feeler three is 12 then h1 equals one we now change our direction back this way now we're look checking still checking all four feelers but if feeler number four happens to be oh look at that that's that's yellow now instead of blue or, or black whatever now we have to go if feeler four is 12 which that's the color of the border then h1 equals minus one so instead of uh, comparing the disposition to the the, 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 the the spot instead of comparing the, the spot the location of the spot to the wall or to the grid whatever it just checks the four pixels top bottom left and right of your dot if any of them are not zero it means we hit something so we got to respond uh, accordingly and p set yeah so if in other words it's checking and if if you made a, a change then we uh, change the location and PSET for the new location, there you are, that's 14. Now dot two is essentially identical, oh no, I'm sorry, this is same thing as dot one here, except instead of putting the PSET to pick, uh, 14, it sets it to zero, blank. That's why you see just a little line there. And there you have it. That's basically it for the, the, the dot two, and all it's doing is the same thing. Now we got, up here we have, Feeler 1, 2, 3, and 4, 
Well, here we have feeler five, six, seven, and eight, and same idea. We're looking, and if it's if it's twelve, then we've hit a border. And we've got to change the uh, direction. Dot three, that's the purple one, which is identical to dot one, it's just a different color, thirteen, and dot four is identical to dot two. It, this is just what erases dot thirteen. Yeah, I don't, don't believe I explained that too too well. But let's try it and go through this again. Maybe I can get my tangle tunneled up or untangled. Yes, yeah, so we start by initializing the program. We clear the, here, let's turn the sound on so you can hear just how annoying this is. Watch this run. Boop. Alrighty, what does it uh, go with? I think one. Yep, there we go. Is that dots? Try two. Nope. Try option three. Okay, now here again, instead of lines, we just got the little dots going here. What happens, like with the yellow, dot one draws the yellow dot. And then dot three comes by after it and changes it black, back to black. So instead of having a line, it, essentially they're chasing each other. It, it, the yellow pixel being drawn and then the black pixel being drawn after it. Same with purple. It draws purple and then the black pixel after it. So let's try five. Yeah. Okay, you hear this. You know this. Hang on, let me mute this. That's That gets annoying real quick. But you know, this kind of point here, let's... Uh, eight, is it? No. Seven. There we go. So here we go. We got our border. We got our grid. And every time that the, the, the things move by, around, the dots are moving around the screen, it's every t with every time it computes a new pixel, it checks. Wait, is this pixel above me red or is it is it black? Okay, I can keep going. Oh nope, it's it's a color, so I got to change the other direction. Likewise, if it's coming down, is this pixel below me? Feeler number four is that okay? That's a color now, so I got to go up. Same with the purple. And this makes it. If you can imagine all the comp compute computations and comparisons it would have to do, it would slow this thing down to ridiculous. So what can we do with this technique? Well, obviously we got these things bouncing around, around the screen. Maybe we could put a little fella in there and you move him around with the mouse or the keys or whatever and try to avoid these guys. They hit you, you're dead. Or put some treasures in there. Or maybe those are laser beams that you're shooting at your enemy and it bounces around. If it hits him, he's dead. So that's a basic concept. All it is is a different type of collision. We talked about in episode four about collisions where it would check how close are these these two objects and if they're within a certain distance well then we have to change the direction now we're not worried about where the position is all we're doing is we're checking the colors of the pixels above below left and right of our current location and if it's black if it's zero hey cool just keep on going up down left right whatever we're doing on the other hand if the color is not black then we have to do something we have to change the direction add some points subtract tracks whatever we'll, 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 we talked about that earlier now that is about it, I think, for this code. However, there's a couple more things to show you. Let's see here, uh, enter here. All right, so here we are, here we are. We got, uh, let's see, um, mm -mm -mm, we want to find, yeah, here we go. These two lines here, you notice palette 12 here and palette 12, blah, blah, blah. Well, at the moment they're they're uh, disabled, so we'll just re-enable these lines and see what happens, and run. Okay, what's happening here? Uh, well, what we've done, we used palette 7 to turn the color 12, we turned it black, essentially. And the computer still sees all the grids and the borders and everything there, but we don't see it. It's essentially we painted it all black, so it's invisible. Well, what's the point of that? Well, you could have an invisible, maybe a, one of these walls is, is a different color. It's, it's a, oh, I don't know, a warp or something, a trap, a bomb, it could kill you instantly, you don't know. Uh, you could have, maybe there is another, you could, for instead of painting the walls different colors, you could paint the, you have an enemy that run around, but he paint him black or whatever the background color is, so he's invisible and all of a sudden he comes along and gets you, you don't know. Another thing we can do here, hang on one second, boop, uh, here, quit, back to here, we'll disable this line, apostrophe, boop, now we'll re-enable this one, backspace and run again uh, now look here now the grid and the borders are green now it, as far as the program is concerned the way it works it's still looking for number 12 so these are still pink borders or, or walls as far as the program is concerned but we've changed the color basically put a coat of paint over top of it 
What good is that? Well, again, you could have one uh, one wall, maybe this wall just bounces you, but this one's actually green, and if you hit a green or blue one, okay, put it this way, you could have a blue wall, a green wall, red wall, all painted the same color, and they do different op uh, actions, like this one will bounce you back and forth. Maybe if you hit this one, it's a yellow wall, and it warps you to the next level, or kills you instantly. Who knows? All different kinds of, of possibilities. But these are just th some of the things you can work with. That's about all I have for this program, uh, but now it's time for superiors, and we're going to bring that up, see what we got this time, uh, and I guess afterwards we'll have a brief goodbye, and good, hang on just a second. Superiors! Okay, this time around we'll be checking out a YouTube channel called RSD Academy, uh, owned and operated by a gentleman named uh, Bob Duhamel. <laughs> This man is brilliant. He is one of, if not the best educators I've, I've ever come across. If you want to know anything about electronics, this man knows it, and he can teach it to you. We'll take a look at the page here. Hold on just a second. So here we are at the homepage of RSD Academy, uh, owned and operated once again by one Mr. Bob Duhamel. Uh, Bob, his, I, I can't say enough good things about Bob. He is perhaps the finest educator I think I've ever come across. Uh, you know, he was, it's, this is all electronics, of course. The man knows it inside and out. There's not a thing he can't show you. I mean, everything from the, the just the nuts and bolts of, of uh, capacitors, resistors, the, the various components and everything, the very, the, the, the fundamentals, all the way up to, oh, complex circuitry, electronic, uh, I'm sorry, amplification. Here's, this is about uh, the, the groove, the needles on a, a turntable, the old uh, phonographs, and are they lying? Why your 12 volt power supply is not actually 12 volts? Everything from, again, from just a simple, the, the most simple components and, and most simple components and circuits oh, oh well here we go are we building computers wrong and doctors can't work but they do <laughs> bob is uh, he can take the most complex just un unintelligible situations or, or concepts and make them just crystal clear, unlike myself. But anyway, you, you must check out the RSD Academy. If you're at all interested in electronics, there is everything you would ever want to know and more on this page. He's got his own website as well where you can actually sign up and go. He's got a, a, a curriculum, an a actual program you can study from the simplest Absolute beginner electronics up to again amplification filters uh, oscillators uh, all kinds of uh, digital processing everything you can think of Bob can help you with and you have to check out the RSD Academy that's all I can say it's I have nothing but the best to say about this man and uh, wow he really is doing a service to the people by by making this information all available for free you'd pay thousands of dollars to go to school for this but he bang there it is. All, everything you want to know and more. Check out RSD Command Academy. <laughs> RSD Command Academy. RSD Command. I did it again. Check out RSD Academy. You will not be disappointed. I'll have to say. So, okay, back to the uh, back to the video. Yeah. See ya. In a minute. Bye. All right. Well, I believe that wraps it up for this episode. I think we've, we've covered the basics or the, the important points anyway. Again. It's uh, the feelers, feelers. Uh, essentially it's it's a, a technique for collision checking instead of comparing, well, how high and how close and the, none of that comparison nonsense. You just, you're moving something around the screen, checks in the, the four pixels, top, bottom, left, right. And if it's a happens to be a, a color that is not zero background if there's a color there but you've hit a wall you've hit maybe another opponent or, or something like that maybe you hit a treasure if it's something blue that's a treasure good thing hey whatever whatever you want to do but this is the basic technique you're not worried about calculating all these things just check those four pixels either side of your your item and if it's a different color than you expect you do something you change the, the direction. You add points, subtract points. You kill somebody or whatever. That's it. Uh, any questions? Yeah, and, and as always, I've got this code, the, the code down the screen there. Down there, download this, this crap so you don't have to bother typing it out. Uh, scream at me. Uh, uh, one thing I will ask is please share this with anyone you, you, you think might enjoy it. Why do I keep doing this with my hands? Share it if you feel like it or don't. <laughs>
live your own life. We all got too many responsibilities. Out. I'm not ask you to do anything, but it, it would, I would appreciate it if you'd share it with people. And because I want this this stuff to be seen, people learn from this, and hopefully help somebody. Uh, yeah, I believe that that wraps it up. And no more for you. Go live your life and hasta la pizza, baby.